on top of the ropes, well, and will he soon find out? Well, while they're on commercial break, Devin Haney should cruise to a unanimous decision victory over George Cambosos. I have it nine rounds to three because I'm I'm guessing I'm generously. Those last two rounds, I'm going to give to George Cambosos. And I gave him round, and that's just being generous. Really, I don't want to give a round 11 to him, but definitely round 12 I can kind of give to him because Devin Haney was dancing around. Uh, there's supposed to be a rematch, you know, if the right man wins tonight, me and Devin Haney, we're supposed to get a rematch sometime later on this year, Haney versus Cambosos too. Devin Haney should go on to defend his WBC title, but also capture the WBC franchise, unifying those fucking bull, that bullshit WBC franchise title, WBA Super, IBF, WBO, and Ring Magazine Championship at 135 pounds. I got to imagine that Tiafimo Lopez and Tank Davis must be sick right now because Devin Haney is now on top of the division with all the belts, or he should get them all. Let's listen into the scorecards. I'm really interested in seeing these scorecards because you know one of them is going to be messed up. One of them is going to be messed up, but this is, this is, this is powerful. You know, the political effect that this is going to have on 135 130 and 140 for you know at least another year is massive this wasn't supposed to happen Our three judges include sultan and Ayede from hungary who mostly is at the championship level in the uk and throughout europe Paweł cardini from poland who has over 900 bouts judged in a 21 year career and Benoit Roussel from Canada, who has been on the right side of many ringside observers' opinions and scorecards for over 18 years. No geographical bias, no Australian, no American. And if they see it the way most ringside observers see it, then 23-year-old Devin Haney is about to find out that he's the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. So while they're waiting for them to uh, read the scorecards, uh, George Cambosos had the wrong game plan. For some reason, he thought it would be smart for him to go out there to try to outbox Devin Haney when he should have lived up to his moniker, um, alias of, look at them, look at them, they're gutted. Their alias of, his alias of being ferocious. For what game plan him and his team had, I don't know. Did it have something to do with the weigh-in yesterday? Highly unlikely. But now the question is, do you want to see a rematch? Because there's a rematch clause. There's too much at stake for Kimbosos not to take the rematch. Because if he doesn't, kind of like Deontay Wilder, if he didn't take the rematch with Tyson Fury, he will go down. He will go all the way to the back of the line. And it would be God knows when or if ever he gets a sniff at a world uh, title again. You know, and that's how the politics are right now in boxing, and especially at the 130 pound, 35 pound division, the lightweight division. So they supposed to have about 50,000 or so. System of many pundits. 50,000 or so in attendance. It's for being. Um, if they were to do a rematch, they obviously can't do it in a stadium again, right? That's just not going to sell. You know, are you even interested in a rematch? Because I'm not. When you get a type of beating like that. There's no need for a rematch. I can see if it was a knockout, but it was a close fight up to the knockout. Many Cambosos got knocked out. And then it's like, all right, well, it was close until the knockout. All you got to do is not get knocked the fuck out again. But in this case, nah. You know, there shouldn't be, you know, like, nah, no rematch. 116 to 112. Pablo Cardinia calls it. 118 to 110. All three judges have it for the winner by unanimous decision. From Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, now the universally recognized undisputed lightweight champion of the world, Devin the Dream Haney. Devin the, Devin the Dream Haney. The dream is now a reality. At 23 years old, the Oakland native, the Vegas resident, will head back to the States with every belt there is to grab onto.
He has every belt in the division. Shout out to Devin Haney. They made a bunch of money. Give him his flowers right now. Devin Haney is the king right now at 135 pounds. In a very deep division. A division with Vasily Lomachenko and Tank Davis. That's the fight I want to see. Between these two camps, there was a lot that was said this week at various press conferences. That's the fight I want to see. That Lomachenko fight. They're still giving him all his belts. That's the fight I want to see. Hopefully, Devin Haney keep it cool. I believe him and his pop going to keep it cool and they're not going to, you know, get all fucking corny on us. No more email, champ. That's done. He didn't just win one belt. He won them all. He beat the man who beat the man who beat the man. What up, Lou Duva? Of the American who's now the undisputed world champion coming up. As Cambosis They're about to go in commercial break. The center of the ring. Be able to talk a little and bit. Sports Center is coming your way right now. So they're about to um, do the post fight interviews. Um, George Cambosis showing love to uh, Devin Haney and to uh, Bill Haney. Now, the rematch, I think the rematch is only inevitable because of the financial, you know, and the fact that it's too many belts, you know, just to let go. You know, um, George Camboso and his team can't walk away from that chance because there's a lot of political implications. You know, if George Cambosos walks away, if George Cambosos walks away, then no telling when he'll ever be able to get a title shot again and he'll have to work his way back up or be chosen chosen as a voluntary. A voluntary. Now, the issue with the rematch is, well, it's not going to do as good as the first one. Normally, rematches don't, depending. You know, but in this case, he was dominated and the card shown he was dominated. Yeah, you had some cards that were closer than it was supposed to be, like that 116, 112. But nonetheless, there he is. We're waiting for the post-fight interview. But, you know, there it is. Now, if they do a rematch, okay, you know, maybe they want to test their luck in America. But, you know, would fans really travel for George Cambosos at this point? You know, for a fight of this magnitude, where they'll probably try to... Um, thanks for the super chat, Luda Bella. You blame Lomachenko for this shit. Well, if Lomachenko would have fought Cambosos tonight, which it was supposed to be, or oh, let's listen in. Eighth fighter in the four belt era to become the undisputed champion of the world. How does that sound? Alhamdulillah, all praise due to Allah. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. It is quite the scene, quite obviously, here in the ring. What did it mean to have the man who's holding you and the belts behind you, your father, Bill, arrive here overnight for this fight? Man, this is a dream come true. Uh, I was, I was, man, I was going through it without my dad being here because I want, I knew this was a big moment for both of us. We, we both dreamed of this. Since we started out, we said we wanted to be the best. And uh, it would, it would, it would have hurt me to accomplish this without him. So I'm so thankful. I thank God, alhamdulillah, that I was able, that we was able to accomplish this together. The fight itself, you looked very comfortable from early on. Yeah, um, I was comfortable. I, I just was sticking, sticking to the game plan. Uh, the, the game plan was to go in there, hit, and not get hit. And uh, I did that for uh, majority of the fight. I took the last round off just because I knew I was comfortable ahead. But uh, I, fought, I fought a good, smart fight. You said you knew what he would do, when he would do it, and how he would do it. Is that how it played out? Yeah, um, I handicapped him of, of his best things. He wanted to land an overhand right hand, and he wanted to land a, a big left hook. I handicapped him. Uh, I was fighting both ways. When I fought, when I would go to the, the left, I would fight his right hand. When I would go to the right, I would fight his hook, and he couldn't hit me with neither one of them. You signed up, both of you, to do this twice. Will we see you back here later in the year in Marvel Arena again? Uh, inshallah, you know, if, 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 if it's meant for it to happen, if Allah, you know, wants, it wants it to happen, I'll be back. What do you have to say about your opponent today? He was very magnanimous in bringing over the belts and handing them to you, having lost the fight to you. I, I, take, my, I take my hat off to him because he's a true warrior. Anybody that steps in the ring, uh, I, I respect. It was nothing but respect uh, through the whole buildup. Even though he got, disrespect, got disrespectful, I stayed a gentleman and uh, I stayed professional.
congratulations. It is a momentous day. Undisputed champion of the world. I want to thank George Cambosos and all of Australia for coming out. Uh, uh, thank you, George, for giving me the, the shot. Uh, 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 a lot of these so-called, a lot, a lot of these so-called champions, they, they wouldn't give me my, give me my shot. But George w w w was a true champion, and he gave me my shot. So thank you for this. Congratulations, Devin. A tremendous job here today on enemy territory uh, here at Marvel Arena. We will wander over the ring and make our way to George Cambosis right now to speak to the man who created this day right here in Marvel Arena. It's been a fabulous occasion, George. Uh, obviously, it didn't work out the way you wanted, but what a day this has been. Yeah, look, this is amazing for the sport, amazing for this country. And uh, at the end of the day, I want to take the best test, the, the hardest test. So I'm going to give him full respect after his victory today. Let him have his time and uh, we'll do it again. I had to implement a few things, but I thought the fight was very close. But look, I'm not going to uh, wreck his moment. I had my moment in uh, last November and my moment was wrecked. So let him have his moment and uh, I'll see you again real soon. I've got to take you back to yesterday, to the weigh-in. You had the hiccup as far as making weight was concerned. Was that a factor in this decision? No, no, no that, was, that was definitely not a factor. He just uh, boxed his game. You know, he moved, he, he boxed. He didn't really want to come to, to fight too much, but um, that's his game, so I'll give him respect, and uh, I'm going to change a few things and uh, get him back uh, end of this year. So all respect to him. Let him have his moment, and uh, thank you to everybody in Australia, everyone in Greece, everyone in the world. I take the risk. I fought the best of the best, and uh, at the end of the day, I didn't have to fight him. Not many wanted to fight him, but I gave him the shot straight away. So uh, I'm sure we get, we, we'll do it again. Thank the, you. The right hand that was so effective against Teofimo Lopez in Madison Square Garden wasn't landed as much today. That was an issue for you. Yeah, look, it landed a few times. I worked it to the body, but uh, he had a smart game plan. He, he grabbed and held a lot and, you know, did what he had to do to win. That's, that's what it's about. You do what you have to do to win. And today, the, uh, they gave him the, the decision, but uh, I'm sure it will change when we get it, get it on again. But again, respect to him, respect to boxing. This is boxing and uh, you fight the best. Win, lose or draw, this is what about. Fuck protecting records. I've always been about fighting the best and uh, I gave him a shot. We do it again. There is the rematch clause, of course, as you, you mentioned. See, you do it again. You we'll see do those it cards? Later this year? Yes, yeah, we do it again and uh, look, I gave him the shot. If I didn't give him the shot, he would not have got this shot and had his moment now. So uh, we'll do it again and uh, I will get my shot again, two times. It has been a fabulous week of boxing right here in Melbourne. What a show today. Congratulations once again. George Cambosis Jr. right here at Marvel Stadium. Thanks, George. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody that came out. It's an amazing event. And uh, this is what it's about. The best fight and the best. So uh, give him his respect and uh, we'll get him again. Thank you, everybody that came. My team, my family, my kids. There's a great memories for my kids. So uh, you know, thank you very much. I love boxing. And uh, you know, this is going to ignite the fire even more. I've been for a lot of adversity. So God bless. And uh, I'll be back. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you later this year. Jared, back to you. Was there a moment you felt this fight was not in your control? No, um, from, 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 round, from round one to round 12, I boxed comfortably. I was out my, or I stuck to my game plan. My dad put out a, uh, made a, came up with a great game plan, and we stuck to it the, the whole fight. I just was staying focused. I was taking it round by round by round, and uh, I won pretty much, I would say, give myself 11 out of 12 rounds. You lost a round? Which round? Uh, I would say the last round just because I took off. I knew that was that was winning comfortable. So I just wanted to, you know, stay stay relaxed and uh, and box smart. You said the key in part was taking the crowd out of the fight, but also taking him out of the fight. Could you feel him start to soften? Could you feel him get resigned that there's nothing I can do with this kid? Yeah, um, say that again, sorry. Did you feel a point where he said, hey, I, I can't, there's nothing I can do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> as the fight was going on, I felt him giving up more and more and more. But uh, I didn't want to press. I wanted to uh, stick to my game plan. I knew that, was that, that you know, I was fighting in, in his hometown. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to pitch a shutout. Okay, I, I thought it was pretty close to a shutout. George, hey, congratulations. 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 Thank you for the opportunity. Congrats, and uh, we'll do it again. Good today. Good victory. Good time. Congratulations to the both of you, but George, while I have you here, there is an automatic rematch clause. It wasn't a close fight, I don't think. Are you going to activate that clause? Okay, I, it's okay. Are you going to activate that clause? I'm a warrior. For me, this adversity, I've got to come back and uh, fight this adversity. It's part of the game. I'm not here to protect no zeros, and you're the same. He's not here to protect no zeros. Fight the best, and you know what? Young fighters are doing that. The rest need to do that in this sport, and I give him his time. He got the belt today, and... Uh, and I will do it again. I, I commend you both for that, but you didn't, you didn't necessarily want that clause. You're glad it's there now.
Can you say with absolute certainty that we will be back here, you will exercise that clause, you guys are going to do it again? Yes, 100%. This is going to make me hungry. This is going to be the, uh, the adversity that I've had to go through, go through my whole career, my whole life. So uh, I gave him the opportunity, and I'm sure he'll give me the opportunity as champion now. What do you feel about coming back here? Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not ducking or dodging nobody. Of course, you know, if, if, if it makes sense, the, the people want to see it, the, the, the network wants it, then of course I'll do it again. Uh, if not, then I'll, I'll fight I'll fight whoever. Uh, I'm not ducking or dodging nobody, but everything got to make sense. Devin, I know you had talked about dealing with the adversity, whether your father was here or not. But be serious, me man. You're glad he was here, right? Man, uh, I thank God for it. You know, every day I would pray to Allah that my dad, that my dad would come, and uh, he came. I'm happy that we were able to enjoy this moment together. This is a dream come true for both of us, and uh, I'm happy. I, I ask you both, again with all respect, what to each of you was the difference in the fight, Devin? The difference, like, for, what do you mean? The difference in the fight. Uh, me, I just, I just, it was, it was me handicapping him and his best attributes. We studied him day in and day out. I knew he wanted to come, come with the big right hand, uh, overhand. I knew he wanted to come with the hook. So I would, I would feel him bracing for it. I would know when he would throw it, and uh, when he would do it, I would make a miss. His father said, "Stay away from the brick. That's your right hand." What? Did you not expect from Devin Haney? Yeah, look, his timing was just a little bit sharper than mine today, but I feel I landed some really good shots in there as well in the exchanges, and uh, he had a great game plan. He implemented the game plan, and uh, it is what it is. What can you do different to get your belts back, or are we looking at a, a true, a young prodigy, someone who's going to be a champion in this game for many years to come? Yeah, look, I've got to go back to the drawing board with my team and uh, implement the game plans that I had in my head. Fortunately, it didn't work to the best of uh, that I wanted to tonight, but I thought I did certain things that were great as well, but all the best for me. It's his time, and uh, I'll be back to the drawing board, and uh, we'll do it again. Thank you both for the best, fighting the best. Bill, come here for a second. You started this thing. You were confident enough. You were confident enough to send your kids fighting in bars and pool halls in Tijuana. He's a teenager. What does this mean to you tonight? It's Long post-fight interview, but it is undisputed. We're going to talk after. This means everything. Hey, Mauricio, ain't we missing the missing the belt? It should be two green ones over here. You got two oh. green. You got two green. We got everything, Mark, and it means everything to me. This guy, I, I, I told people what kind of fighter he was. They didn't believe me, and now he showed the world. He came and pitched a shutout on a big stage like this with all the crowd against him, and they were silent. I'm so happy. We believe you now. I think everybody around here believes you. Are you willing for your son to come back here? I don't know if there's any contractual leeway to come back here and do it all over again. Of course, Allah, is the, Allah knows best. Devin is the boss, and if he says we're coming back, we're coming back. He, you know he told me do everything to make this fight happen, right? I, I wouldn't, I, I don't know if I would have. He said make it happen under any uh, circumstance, and that's what we did. Hey, man, it's been a pleasure covering all, all of you. Devin. Joe, back to you. Devin, well, once again, um, you had two judges score at 116-112, and then you had a 118-110. Me personally, um, as Devin Haney said in the uh, post-fight interview, um, he took off round number 12. So I gave George Cambosos round number two and round number 12. He may have lost round number 11 as well, meaning uh, Devin Haney, because he took the, he took his foot off the gas. Um, now the question is, what's going to be next? Because do people want to see a rematch of this? Do you want to see a rematch? Yes. Okay, I'll tell you what. One is, yes, you want to see a rematch. Just type one in the chat if you want to see a rematch. Two, no for a rematch. We'll do a little quick poll like that. So one, if you're for a rematch. Two, um for no because as it stands right now i don't want to see this shit no more like like it's like when a fighter is getting dominated and they get knocked the fuck out cold it's like yo you don't want to have that happen to you again you know and what can he do differently in a rematch what can he do differently in a rematch you know um he fought the wrong fight. He was trying to outbox a bow. Oh, shit. Oh, you guys are going, you're going crazy. Oh, well, listen, the, the people have spoken. The people have spoken. The people have spoken. You know, what does the rematch bring to us? You know, do you? Okay, okay. All right, listen. For the hardcore fans, right? For the hardcore fans. 
Do you want to sit through that again? Now, I understand and remember, we're boxing connoisseurs. We love this shit. You know, fights that others call boring, we're going to be like, yo, that was a good fight. It was a chess match. But at the end of the day, do you really want to sit through that again? Is that going to be a day anytime soon, you know, where if you're not doing it for research purposes, and you're going to be like, yo, I'm going to sit down and watch Haney versus Cambosos again. That was a cracker right there. Here's the uh, punch stats right here. Haney outlanded Cambosos 159 to 100. And that's not a lot of punches. Ew. No way. No way, Jack. No way. Now, obviously, I got to sit through it if they fight again. Now, they had a 50 or so thousand there at the arena. And you would think that at the stadium, you would think that if they have the rematch, it's going to take place in Australia because George Cambosos still has control over what happens with the rematch. So if he invokes his rematch clause, Debbie Haney has to come back to Australia and they still have to fight again. But I don't think no 50,000 people are going to show up. For Australian fans, where can they have this fight at over in Australia? It's got to be, what, a 10,000, you know, seat arena, maybe 15,000. Like, who wants to sit through that again? Cause, because what can George Cambosos do differently? Is he going to Is he going to be able to evade the jab? Is he going to step up his punch output? Is he going to try to be ferocious and try to be the pressure fighter? You know, because what he did was he was trying to outbox Devin Haney and he was looking for a big shot. And then he started lunging. And my issue with Devin Haney is because his hands are not clean. My issue with Devin Haney is like, turn it up, you know? Like, there was times where you would think, like, okay, maybe he can be able to probably drop or stop George Cambosos, and they were telling him to follow up the jab with the right hand. How dare you? When he was doing it, he was somewhat successful. But Devin Haney, even though he's a great boxer, doesn't have the most appealing, pleasing style. But one thing is for sure, he's undisputed. Ryan Garcia, Javante Tank Davis, Vasil Lomachenko, if they won a the belt, they all got to come to him. And as it stands right now, he's going to be tied up until at least next April or so. And then the next fight then, so basically, if, if it's Cambosos, right, again, sometime in the fall, then sometime next April or May around this time, earlier, sooner, it would be Haney versus Lomachenko. So already, that's a year from now, tied up, but you know, where there's no titles available for any of the fighters. So guys like Javante, guys like Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia, all those guys are going to have to fight each other. Even Shakur Stevenson, who's been talking about moving up, he has a better chance of getting um um uh Devin Haney. But there's a lot going on. And for you know George Cambos to be talking all this shit and to put up the performance like that, not only did he miss weight, whatever the case may have been scales or whatever some shit went down because he did say all he had to do was take a piss that's probably big j right there i don't really have time i'm gonna let him he going he going to get some interviews because he predicted a knockout he's saying he ready all right well let me let me let me call him up so big j is my colleague he predict he's at the fight right now And he predicted Cambosos by KO. So he's got to go to the post-fight press conference soon. He's going to be ringing me up. Here's some uh, brief highlights. You know? It just wasn't really anything. It was just jabs. Cambosos was trying, you know, to do something. But it was mostly just jabs just eating him up. Look. Just eating him up. That was the that was the uh, the fight. Look. But you another one's gonna come jab. And he just couldn't do nothing about it, especially since you know he's he doesn't have the reach. But there was no big like wobbling punch in the fight. You know, the type of fight. By the way, shout out for the super chat. Thanks, uh, Sam, for uh that would be like Fulton versus Roman again. Yes. Um oh wait, here's my colleague, Big J. All right, let's see what he has to say. All right, mate. Um, so what's going on? What were your thoughts on the fight? I understand you're at the arena right now and you got to go get to some interviews and post-fight, but what's your thoughts? 
Well, Haney used a jab and won. And I mean, 118, 110 were ridiculous. But mm. you know, Haney used that jab and just kept him at bay and neutralised him, really, because it wasn't really an exciting How fight. Dare the crowd you? was very, very quiet until George got in there and ting, ting. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it was a win for Haney. It wasn't ex an exciting win. Like, it was a normal Devin Haney win. He did what he needed to do, but it wasn't finessing or exciting or anything like that. So, I don't know. What did you think? Well, like I said, you know, um, he fought the wrong fight. You know, he went out there to try to outbox him. Yeah, and George, was... no. Go ahead. George kept on waiting for the counter because he was kept waiting to catch him, and it, it, it just it just didn't go after him. He did, well, he didn't, he did the exact opposite of what he did in the Lopez fight. For exact a opposite. fighter as, as defensively sound as um, uh, Devin Haney, and he and, and it's well known. Even George said it himself. He's a highly respected and very very good, technically slick boxer. For him to go out there to try to outbox him, that was the wrong game plan. He needed to go out there to try to rough him up, be in his face, and try to impose his will on him, like he did with Tiafimo Lopez. That's exactly right. That's exactly what he should have done. He didn't do it. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, Devin got the win. Full credit to him. He used that jab um, and did what he needed to do. So, yeah. Now it's the matter of if the rematch. Happens. Okay, well, yeah, well, let me ask you this. And I'm not do you think, well, how do you feel about the rematch before I let you go? How do you feel about the rematch? Uh, honestly, I don't think there should be a rematch, and if it is, it should be in a smaller arena, not no stadium. I don't think a rematch will happen, personally. It's so, too much and, on the well, line, though, those calls, belts. But I think Politically, though, I don't think that Ken Boca's yeah. team going to let him walk away from that. Yeah, exactly. So George will have to change. All George has to do is do exactly what he did with Lopez and help you right. He needs to be the aggressor. That's well, what he needs we'll to see. Do. So, all right. Um, so, I think you got you got to start getting the interviews and everything. So, uh, we'll check. We'll check later on, Big Jay. Yeah, no worries, man. All right. All right. Yeah. So, hopefully, he'll be able to get us an interview with um um Devin Haney. And um and or George Camboso. So he's there right now. The post fight press conference is going to be starting soon. So what we're going to do is we're going to take about a half an hour break. Um, I'm wondering if I should leave the stream live or start a new one. Well, anyway, we're going to take a half an hour break, and then we're going to come back for the uh, post fight uh, press conference. Once again, take a time out, like the video, subscribe. Down below in the description box is the link to all my social media. It's on my uh, link tree right down below. Literally, it's in the, in the description box of the YouTube video. You'll be able to um, follow me on Twitter at uh, T Street Controversy. And I'm, I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well. My Facebook group is opening up in a couple of weeks under uh, Fight View 360. Shout out to my colleague, Big J, who's got some interviews on the channel from uh, Lucas Brown, uh, Michael Buffer. So basically, we covered the shit out this fight this weekend. Shout out to um, and thank you to Main Event, um, the pay per view platform over there. Also, it's sixty dollars over there on 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 um on a uh, main event pay per view. Fans are not going to pay for that again. So thank you to Duco, thank you to Top Rank, thank you to the viewers, all the guys who super chatted um, during the main events of post fights of of major fights. We live stream during the main event. You know, I don't like a lot of dead time in between my stream. We like to make sure we're giving you you know like nice you know like straightforward content. Also, my podcast is going to be starting soon, um, the beginning of July. It's finally here, where we're going to be um, talking about boxing basically for an hour a week. And I'm going to be giving you like full-fledged breakdowns. But my breakdown of this fight is simple. George Cambosos fought the wrong game plan. He fought the wrong game plan. You know, he went out there to try to outbox him. Like, what was he thinking? And, you know, what can he change in the, in the rematch? He's just going to get his head jabbed off again. I don't see any difference between now and, you know, where he can Im improve in the uh, rematch. And as far as who is Devin Haney going to fight next, I think it's going to be Kim Bosos again, but it can't be in no stadium. Hopefully, for me, I'm hoping it's Lomachenko. And I'm only saying that because I would love for it to be Tank, but politically, we know that ain't going to happen. And it is what it is. I would like to see, I would like to see Haney versus Shakura, too. That can happen. Let me tell you something. If it's not George Cambosos, you know, we'll see. I'm just talking to here myself. Oh, you probably a Cambosos fan. Get out of here. I'm T Street Controversy with 5U360. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you guys in about uh, 15, no, about a half an hour or so for the post-fight show.
Also, be sure to drop some likes before you go. Thanks for watching.